So what we're going to talk about this morning is we're going to talk about what happens after you've got a walk cycle set up and finished um, and how you take that walk cycle and make it, you know, more like, you know, do more with it. So the first thing that you'll see is I've got I've got this character and I've got a good walk cycle going. OK. And um, the the process of duplicating the walk cycle is actually really, really simple. Um, you're just going to zoom in and uh, you want to identify your first and your last keyframes of the cycle itself. So here uh, the character is standing still and then this is really my first keyframe and then this is the last keyframe just before you get back to the first keyframe. So this is all really good and what you all you need to do is you get this whole big list of all the, the bones here. You can actually collapse that and um, and once you collapse that, you really are only concerned about the keyframes that are along the top. Now, that's not always the case. Sometimes you do need to know the individual keyframes for each bone, uh, that sort of a thing. But in this case, you really don't. So we're just going to, I'm going to hit the B key and then left click and drag. And that allows me to highlight those keyframes, which is really a handy little shortcut that I've learned recently. Um, and then I'm going to uh, hit Shift and D for duplicate. And I'm going to get a whole new set of keyframes. And I'm just going to bring them out the same distance away from the others. And I'm just going to do that a couple of times here to get a walk cycle. And before you copy it too many times, I recommend doing a, a, a simple, like, just play it and see if it's really actually going to be, you know, the right speed and everything like that. So, all right, so that, that does look, that does look excellent. So now we've added, we're going to add a couple things to our character. One of the first things that we added um, is, is this empty here, which is actually a rect or a cube. Um, and that is the camera target. And I've parented, I've made that a child of the armature. Okay, so that's what that empty square is. If you're wondering what that or cube, if that wondering what that empty cube is, that's what that is. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to add another empty to this character, but this empty is actually going to control the character's movements. And I find this a really good way to work with characters. And here's why: you can take the body and you can move it forward. You can use the armature to move it forward. But then what happens is that forward motion becomes part of the armature's keyframes. And so if you're trying to duplicate a walk cycle, you'll also be duplicating that forward motion. So it kind of makes it a little bit more difficult because that's when, you know, I mean, it's easily solved. You just open this up and you only copy the keyframes that you need for, for whatever, but it, it actually becomes relatively difficult. I've seen solutions where people actually added a bone in the armature that's out floating here in front of the person or, or whatever and added a follow path, whatever. <clears throat> what I'm finding as I'm doing this more and more with my students, the easiest thing is actually to add another empty. So I'm going to click on her, um, on the body here, just left click, that's going to put the target right there and I'm going to hit Shift A. We're going to add an empty and because we have a cube as the camera target, I'm going to make this a sphere instead. Um, and you want this in the center of the body as much as possible. And let me show you why not by actually placing it away from the center of the body. And so now it's going to be just as simple as taking my armature in the outliner, shift, click on the empty, control P, and I'm going to make the armature a child of the empty object. Done. Now the empty object can control the motion uh, of, of the child. So what's cool about that is when we start to animate this, it's actually going to have a completely different set of keyframes from the poses that are in the armature or in the bones that's in the armature. So that's actually really, really handy. Here's why you don't want it outside the body though, at least in most cases. Whatever you do with this object, the armature and the character are going to do something similar. So let's say you want to have that character rotate, okay? People don't rotate around a point that's outside of their body. They rotate around the center of their body. So if I grab the rotate tool and I rotate her, you can see how she's swinging around the center of the empty object 
as opposed to rotating and pivoting around the center of her body like you might want her to. So this is why it's really important to actually have the empty in the middle. Now I've got a big problem, and that is the fact that now that I've parented this, okay, anywhere I move this, okay, she, the character follows. Now I could grab the armature and try and move it forward, but that might create a new keyframe, so, uh, or might necessitate a new keyframe. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to undo until the parenting is, is undone. Then I'll just take the, the empty and I'm just going to put it in the center, uh, get rid of perspective, check it with the wireframe, and I'm just going to try and make sure that this is in the center of the body of the character as much as possible. If I want to see it a little bit better so I, you know, I can kind of see where it is, I can scale it up, and then you can actually see that empty object. And I also like to rename it um, so I know what it's called. I'll call it the character controller. Okay. Now I'll just parent that again. Control P. Whoops. I did it the wrong way. I selected the uh, armature last, which means that it thought that I wanted to parent the empty to the armature, not the other way around. There you go. So now I've got the character controller's got the armature underneath it. This is also a really great way if you're doing fabric, like a, a cloth simulation, and you want them to move together, but you want the cloth to be independent of the character so the simulation is a little bit better. Um, you know, parent them both under an empty. So now we just need to make our character move forward. So now it's just a matter of me kind of um, synchronizing the motions. So if I open up my armature here, uh, well, you don't even need to do that. If you go here, that first motion here, the character's standing still, then she starts to move. So <clears throat> I'm just going to go here. It's, she starts right at the beginning. So that makes it easy. So I'm going to take my character controller, and I'm going to hover over the character controller and hit I. And I'm going to insert a location, rotation, and scale keyframe. So you might only need to do location or whatever, but I always like to do all three. Um, and then you can see now up here we have the character controller and we have our keyframes for location, rotation, and um, now we can continue. So I'm just going to go forward to the very last keyframe or probably a little bit further because we want that person to stop somewhere around here. And I'll move the character controller and I'll hit I again. And so now we have a simple animation with only two keyframes that exist on the camera controller and is independent of the keyframes for the walk cycle. And now I can test my speed and see, hey, she's you know, moving too fast for the walk. So she's sliding. Yeah, so sliding a little bit, plus the acceleration curves are weird, so I can go and adjust the acceleration curves with the F-curve editor and, and so on and so forth. But let's just say I want it to happen a little faster uh, or a little slower. I can just grab this keyframe and I can extend it a little bit. And now our character is going to be walking a little slower and then maybe that'll be more natural. Yeah. Okay. And then, of course, the, it's not stopped. So I would want to duplicate more of the walk cycle. The important part about this is what you're doing is you're keeping the forward motion of the character separate in it, the keyframes separate from the keyframes on the armature. And this will make your life a lot easier. If you can remember back to our days in Adobe Animate, this is a lot like what we did, where we had a walk cycle inside a symbol, and then we were able to animate the symbol's position, and we just had the walk cycle inside the symbol and synchronize the two. We're doing exactly the same thing here. It's just a slightly different relationship, parent-child relationship, which Symbols kind of are a parent-child relationship in Adobe Animate. They just don't kind of call it that. Um, <clears throat> so hopefully this will kind of help you. And then if you get this done, this is really all you need to have done, um, is a, a forward walk cycle, uh, and, and then you should be good to go. Does that make sense to everybody?